All right, good afternoon. Um, the Secretary General just concluded his first day in his visit of solidarity to Pakistan. In Islamabad, he was briefed on the latest developments by Prime Minister Sharif, Foreign Minister uh, Bhutto Zardari, and other senior government officials. Uh, at a press encounter with the Prime Minister, following a visit to the National Flood Response and Coordination Center, the Secretary General expressed his solidarity with the Pakistani people and reiterated that the UN will do everything possible to mobilize the international community to support Pakistan. Uh, the UN has delivered food or cash assistance and emergency supplies, he said, but this is just a drop in the oceans of need. No country deserves this fate, uh, the Secretary General later said during a joint press conference with the Foreign Minister, and particularly not countries like Pakistan that have done almost nothing to contribute to global warming. He called on developed countries to provide Pakistan and other countries on the front lines with the financial and technical resources they need to survive extreme weather events like these deadly floods. The Secretary General also urged governments to address loss and damage from the climate crisis at COP27 with the seriousness it deserves. This is not a future event, he added. It is happening now all around us. Tomorrow, the Secretary General will see the impact of the floods in the provinces of Sindh and Balochistan. He's scheduled to conclude his visit with a press conference in Karachi. And just like today, we hope to have it streamed on the UN Web TV platform. Meanwhile, the UN humanitarian chief, Martin Griffiths, who is with the Secretary General in Pakistan, has released $7 million from the Central Emergency Response Fund to bolster the emergency aid to Pakistan. Uh, the allocation brings the uh, support from the Central Emergency Fund uh, from the, for the flood response to $10 million, following $3 million dispersed last month. The funds will help prevent waterborne diseases and epidemics and provide nutrition supplements, clean water, and reproductive health care for most vulnerable people, as well as the feed for livestock. A press release uh, will be um, on the allocation will be issued shortly. Speaking to reporters in Pakistan today, the Secretary General spoke um, on the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. He extended his sincere condolences to the Queen's family and to the people of the United Kingdom and the wider Commonwealth. He added that Queen Elizabeth exemplified the values of calmness, dignity, and grace, adding that for lo as long as he can remember, she has been a reassuring presence on the world stage. And you, of course, saw the statement we issued yesterday and also um, the UK mission to the UN has set up a um, book of condolences uh, just behind the visitors, uh, the, excuse me, behind the delegates at the delegates entrance behind the escalators. Um, and you saw that the, uh, the flags uh, were flying at half uh, staff today. Uh, Turning to Sudan, the Special Advisor on Genocide Prevention, uh, Alice Ndiritu, and the Special Advisor on the Responsibility to Protect, George Okoto Obo, have welcomed the recent visit to Sudan by the Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, Karim Khan. While in Sudan, Mr. Khan met with survivors and communities affected by violence in Darfur. As you know, 20 years ago, millions of people in Darfur were displaced and thousands were killed in violence perpetrated by the government of Sudan and the Janjiweed militia. The special advisor stressed that victims and survivors of these heinous crimes deserve justice, and it is our collective responsibility to prevent such crimes from reoccurring. And from South Sudan, the humanitarian coordinator, Sarah Nyanti, said she's deeply concerned about the recent violence in Adidyang in Upper Nile State, where thousands of displaced people have fought, sought refuge. This latest fighting has led to the deaths of civilians, injuries, and further displacement. Up to 5,000 civilians have fled to the site last month following the fighting between rival armed groups. Several civilians fleeing violence on boats and canoes reportedly drowned. The UN peacekeeping mission says this is the latest attack that has also triggered intercommunal fighting among some internally displaced people of different groups within the UN Protection of Civilians site. UN peacekeepers have deployed to rescue drowning civilians and protect affected population. The humanitarian coordinator said the UN and our partners will continue supporting people in the need, in need to the best of their ability, but we need an immediate end to the fighting uh, to, uh, and resolution to the conflict. Um, senior personnel appointment today, the Secretary General is appointing Ivana Zivkovic of Croatia as Assistant Secretary General and Assistant Administrator and Director of the Regional Bureau for Europe 
and the Commonwealth of Independent States in the UN Development Program, UNDP. Uh, Ms. Uh, Zivkovic succeeds uh, Mariana Spolarich Egger of Switzerland, who's been elected as the new president of the International Committee for the Red Cross, and we congratulate her on that. And of course, the Secretary General is grateful uh, for Ms. Egger's uh, commitment and dedicated service to the UN. Ms. Zivkovic is a senior Croatian diplomat, currently serving as Director General for Economic Affairs and Development Cooperation, the Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs in Zagreb. And we congratulate her on her post. And you will have seen that yesterday afternoon we confirmed uh, what you all knew, which is that um, Secretary General Vol uh, that the Secretary General has appointed Volker Turk of Austria as the next UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. This follows the approval by the General Assembly. He succeeds Michelle Bachelet of Chile, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for her commitment and dedicated service to the United Nations. Mr. Turk currently is the Under Secretary General for Policy in the Executive Office of the Secretary General, where he coordinates global policy work. Over the course of his distinguished career, he has published widely on international refugee law and international human rights law. More online, and we congratulate our friend Volker for this wonderful appointment. Today is the International Day to Protect Education from Attack. In a message, the Secretary General stresses that education is a fundamental human rights and an essential driver for achieving peace and sustainable development. Unfortunately, he says, this right continues to fall under attack, especially in conflict-affected areas. The Secretary General notes that in 2020 and 2021, the Global Coalition to Protect Education from Attack reported over 5,000 attacks in cases of military use of schools and universities. More than 9,000 students and educators were killed, abducted, arbitrarily arrested, or injured. The majority of victims were women and girls, and the Secretary General emphasizes that these attacks must stop um, immediately um, and must remain in place for peace and learning. And I'll have a couple of more notes, which I think are being printed, but in the meantime, I will answer your questions. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hi, Steph. A um, couple of questions on the Black Sea Green uh, Initiative, mm -hmm. because uh, recently, I think Russian President Vladimir Putin is quite vocal about uh, criticism on this initiative. On one hand, he said that the MOU signed by UN and, and Russia does not work, not work at least not work that good. And for example, he said he said the EU countries are still put an embargo on those Russian fertilizers to transport from EU ports to non-EU countries. On this end. Uh, we know that uh, Secretary General of uh, UNCTAD, uh, Ms. Greenspan, has already met with the foreign mm -hmm. for, of Deputy Foreign yeah. Minister of Russia on this issue. Any, any development on this? I mean, Ms. Uh, Greenspan, at, uh, on, on instructions of the Secretary General back in, um, in the spring, was tasked to help iron out um, this very important initiative, because you know, there are no uh, sanctions on Russian grains, on Russian <coughs> fertilizer, but there is a there is a complex situation um, within a more general sanctions uh, regime that makes trade challenging for the private sector. So what we are doing, what Rebecca Greenspan and her team are actually doing, is trying to. To iron out all these uh, challenges, trying to remove the bottlenecks, um, they have a help desk uh, within UNCTA to try to help the private sector. Uh, working a lot with uh, insurance companies, shipping companies. This, these are all commercial deals, right? And so uh, there is a political atmosphere, but there's also a commercial atmosphere. And, you know, bus the business community operates in its own uh, ways, has a different level, has a level of risk that may be different uh, from what we do. Um, so we are trying, I, I think, and working extremely diligently um, because it is important um, that Russian grain get to market, that Russian fertilizer uh, get to market. I mean, I, I think it was the, uh, our colleague, the Deputy Secretary General, who was, I think it was her, who was in Ghana not too long ago, who said farmers were telling her that they were planting less for next season, given 
the, the, the rise in the price of fertilizer or the lack of availability. So uh, this is something that's first and foremost on the Secretary General's mind. And on the other hand, he also said that only 3% of the grains that exported from Ukraine uh, went to the poorest countries. Actually, I had a fat, fat shit uh, by, by the JCC on the, as of 27th August. There are only 6% of the grain went to Germany and Sudan and 2% to Djibouti by, via the yeah. WFP I charging mean, listen, vessel. We, I mean, from, from, the, from this, this statistics, I think, I think it's quite true. But, uh, uh, how, how, how would the UN to address this? Look, what we are doing is being as transparent as possible, right? No one is hiding where these ships are going or who's chartering them. I mean, you can see it. Anyone who has access, has an internet connection, uh, can see these things without, uh, without any challenge. Again, we are talking about commercial transactions, except for the humanitarian ships that we're chartering. And WFP has already chartered two ships, one uh, already docked in Djibouti, and I think yesterday uh, I gave you some details about um, the fact that they were actually that that grain is actually making its way to Ethiopia and is in Ethiopia and is being distributed. The second ship, if I'm not mistaken, uh, loaded up with uh, with grain in a Ukrainian port. That grain was offloaded in Turkey. It is being milled into flour. It will then go on to Yemen. A third WFP ship is also on its way. So those are humanitarians. The rest is commercial transactions, right? I mean, they, they were contracts that had been signed with uh, Ukrainian providers. Those are being honored. Uh, we do not have the authority um, to say this ship goes first, this ship goes second. These are, this is about clearing harbors. These are about commercial, uh, commercial transactions. I think what is important is that the fact that we are now seeing more grain going onto the global market than we were in the in the beginning of the war has helped at the at the global level depress some of the uh, some of the prices okay. I, have, I have some other questions but I'll ask you will yield yeah. thank you yield the balance of your time all right if you don't mind I just want to read two two notes and, and then I will go to you Benno um, just to note that uh, the, we welcome the decision by the General Assembly yesterday to hold a summit of the future. The summit, which takes place, which will take place in 2024, was proposed by the Secretary General in his Common Agenda Report. The summit will be a once-in-a-generation opportunity to reinvigorate action in order to better handle the kinds of global shocks and problems that are more and more in evidence and that no country can handle alone. The summit will also be an opportunity to recommit to the fundamental principles of the UN Charter and to turbocharge the Sustainable Development Goals and other existing commitments. It will aim to agree on concrete solutions to challenge that have grown uh, and emerged more recently. The summit will agree on an outcome, a pact for the future that will make makes the multilateral system fit for the challenges of today and tomorrow. The Secretary General hopes that this summit will allow the United Nations to live up to its promises in the Charter to save succeeding generations, not only from the scourge of war, but from the many threats that now exist in our very survival. Uh, also yesterday, uh, from our side, I just wanted to note um, that the General Assembly decided to establish a new UN Office of Youth Affairs, which was another key proposal from the Secretary General as part of his, our, our common agenda. The new office will give us a dedicated office to support 1.2 billion young people in the world today. That's some of you in this audience are still, will still qualify. Others uh, may not, um, myself included, of course. Um, in part, uh, this is part of the broader effort to make the UN more fit uh, for the future and better connected with people across the world. The office will ensure that the UN is fully attuned to the views of young people, facilitates their engagement in our work, and better supports governments on the ground to more effectively respond to their uh, priorities, education, jobs, peace, human rights, and more. The office will work closely with UN agencies, funds, and programs, the General Assembly's Fifth Committee, I guess, will decide on the officer's funding later this year. Back to you, Benno. Thank you. Um, spoke about the Queen already. The state funeral, as far as I know, will be on Monday, which coincides um, with um, the pre-summit of Anga, and it's also one day before yeah. Anga. So how will Anga be 
affected by the state funeral? Well, listen, at this point from our side, and, and Paulina may, uh, I'm sure, will uh, uh, we'll also have uh, something to say on that. From our side, everything is going on as scheduled. Uh, obviously, what may change is the level of, of representation. Um, so at this very moment, there's no change, uh, no change that I'm aware of. And does the Secretary General plan to uh, fly over to the Kingdom? I, I think it's, it's, we, will, I, I, we will know soon, hopefully. Uh, he's obviously very much immersed in his visit in, in Pakistan, uh, but as soon as I have something to announce on that, I will. And one little follow-up on Volker Turk. Um, do you know if he will be already in Geneva on Monday for the Human Rights Council? Uh, I do not believe he will be in Geneva on Monday. Uh, I think it's going to be he's there's going to be a bit of a transition um, period. I don't he will unless I'm contradicted in the next minutes. Uh, I think it'll be a few weeks before he uh, he starts. I mean, uh, just one second. I'll come I'll come back to you in a second. A question on Ukraine. The, the boss of the um, Ukrainian uh, nuclear energy company uh, has uh, called for a UN peacekeeping mission around Zaporizhia. Uh, it seems that it's, in theory, possible to bypass the Security Council and to go into the General Assembly to establish such a peacekeeping mission. Do you have any comment on the opportunity of such a mission? I, I think right now, our concern uh, is on the safety of, of the plant, um, is on, on the, the, the possible risks that a, a, an accident could have. I think the, the Secretary General, uh, I think, spoke very explicitly about those risks and his fears uh, earlier this week at the, um, at the Security Council. Um, we share the concerns expressed by Mr. Rafael Grossi, the head of the IAEA. Uh, the first step, as the Secretary General said, would be for um, Russians and Ukrainian forces to commit not to engage in any military activity uh, towards the plant side, uh, or from inside the plant, or from the uh, towards the plant uh, site. I think it's important that the Japaritsa plant uh, and its area surrounding should never, ever uh, be a target. As for, you know, um, we've seen the issue of peacekeeping missions come up uh, in the past. Uh, on, on, on the legal pathway, uh, I will let member states uh, talk to that. I think our, our focus right now, and I think we think the immediate need continues to be demilitarization, setting up of a security, uh, a security zone. Fit. Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, just perhaps it's, it's a formality about the appointment of Mr. Volker Turk. Since he is an already an existing uh, USG, does he have to be sworn in for his new job, or as, yes, as, as an yeah, international it's a, it's a uh, civil it's a, servant? It's a completely, uh, it's a completely different job. So, he, so you be sworn. I mean, yeah, you, okay. you get to be sworn. You, you get sworn in not because of your rank. You get to be sworn in because of your your post and your 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 mandate. But at the end, he's an international civil servant, even yes, in his new I mean, capacity. He needs to be, yes, he will be sworn in uh, and uh, with a smile. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you have to hold on, wait for the light to come on. There we go. Hello, my name is Veronica. I'm a Doug Hammerskjöld fellow this year. And also I represent uh, Ukrainian news media, New Voice of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to ask you two questions. One is about uh, the Parisian nuclear power plant. Uh, how much it depends on Russian veto uh, and uh, this uh, continuing uh, calls for demilitarization when the current Security Council member always saying that it refuses to dem demilitarize the zone while Ukraine said it agreed. So uh, is not, isn't it a death end in this case? Like keep Look, calling Russia to demilitarize the zone? We're, I think like all of us, we see the dynamics of the, in the Security Council and we understand them. and they're fairly transparent. Um, what the Secretary General is calling for is for a halt to military activities within the plant, uh, in the areas uh, surrounding the plant, um, and his call is for the Russians and Ukrainian forces to commit not to engage in any military activity. 
we do not believe that this requires a, a, um, a, uh, a resolution by the Security Council. It requires action uh, by, the U by Ukraine and by Russia. Uh, so the EIA report says that uh, the, the Commission called Russia to uh, bring all the military equipment out of uh, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Do you have any information if uh, Russians have, like, did anything of that recommendation? No, uh, I think I would, I, sh I do not. You may want to check with the IEA. I'll come back to you, Benno. And then uh, I think Michelle has a less, uh, question online. But go ahead, go, Ephraim, go ahead. Sorry? No, no, no I, I, because Benno was waving, I, I'm still... Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I have a question. I haven't confused um, you for a tall redhead yet, yeah. Um, as we're getting ready for ANGA, if I could ask you please to give us a sense of what the atmosphere is like here at the UN on the eve of that uh, 77 session, and does the UN have any message for world leaders as they're getting ready to converge on New York? Um, um, and uh, what is the most pressing message that world leaders to be, need to be aware of as they're coming here? And what attitude would the UN like to see them adopt for the next? Okay. The, Thank you. The mood within the Secretariat is uh, businesslike and very busy, as we do before any General Assembly. Of course, this is, uh, this is the first General Assembly we've had in person uh, since 2019. Um, so it does create a sense of, of excitement and, and, and a return uh, to, to in person. Um, I think the message is to, to look around and look at all the challenges that we face today. Not one of them can be solved unilaterally by one country. Uh, whether you look at climate change, whether you look at conflict, uh, hunger, which are all interlinked. Um, I, I don't know what, more, what, what greater definition we can give than multi, multilateral problems that need multilateral solutions. And we hope uh, that member states will recommit um, to finding uh, solutions uh, for future generations and for these uh, generations in an atmosphere of, uh, of cooperation, even if they continue to disagree on many issues. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, we have been using the word unprecedented for, since the pandemic began. And um, there's a sense that this year is more difficult than any other year. But I wanted to ask you from your perspective, because in your experience, has it always been this bad? Or is this really the year where? <laughs> Look at this face. Can, okay. Doesn't that answer? No. Um, <laughs> You know, and they said it's hard for me to give a historical perspective, but it's true that things are extremely challenging, extremely difficult on, on, on the political issue, on humanitarian issues, on development issues. Yet there, 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 is, there are beacons of hope. And, you know, frankly, to, to see uh, the, the agreement that we were able to, to get on the Black Sea Grain Initiative in itself, to me, is a beacon of hope. It's challenging, it can be fragile, uh, it can be open to criticism, uh, but the fact that we did get agreement on that and it is being uh, you know, operationalized to, to the maximum poss possible extent, I think gives, gives us hope. Uh, let me go to Michelle and I'll come back to you, Benno. Ms. Thanks, Nichols? Um, two, oh, a follow-up question first. On the nuclear power plant, has the Secretary General made any calls to Russian or Ukrainian officials about what he proposed last week? Does he see this as, uh, given his success with the grain deal and with getting helping to get the uh, people out of the chemical plant, does he see this as another opening for the UN to get involved to try and mediate? Look, I I think the, 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 secretary, the secretary general will exploit uh, any uh, possibility uh, to try to, uh, to move this, all of this in, 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 a, in a positive uh, direction, even while the conflict uh, rages. Uh, there have been contacts uh, with both sides at, at various levels, uh, and I think the IEA has done the same, and we will continue to pursue that. 
Can you give us any insight into who? No, not at this point. I think if the Secretary General uh, were here, to, were here, he will um, he would wax poetically about uh, discreet diplomacy in difficult times. Benno. One, sorry, uh, one yes, more question. Mm -hmm. uh, North Korea. Um, yeah. You will have seen the reports out of uh, Pyongyang about their uh, nuclear stance, I guess, if that's the mm -hmm. way to describe it. Uh, what's the Secretary, General, Secretary General's response to that? Look, um, we've definitely seen uh, those reports. I can tell you that uh, the Secretary General is deeply uh, concerned uh, by the adoption of the, the law on DPRK's policy on nuclear forces uh, that was done by the, the legislature in a DPRK. You know, Secretary General has spoken often and, and, and recently about nuclear weapons, and I think increasing the role of, and significance of nuclear weapons in security doctrines is contrary to decades of efforts uh, by the international community to reduce and eliminate nuclear risks. Uh, the DPRK, by pursuing its nuclear weapons program, including its development of missile using ballistic missile technology, continues to disregard resolutions of the Security Council to cease such activities. The Secretary General reiterates his call uh, to the DPRK to resume dialogue with key parties concerned with a view to achieve sustainable peace and the complete and verifiable denuclearization of the nuclear peninsula. And we'll send that to you in writing. Benno. Thank you. Um, so Thank you. Ambassador Thomas Greenfield yesterday held a quite remarkable speech uh, in San Francisco also saying um, that the Security Council has to be reformed and showing that the U.S. is open to expand it. Um, I guess you slash the Secretary General might have an opinion about that in a comment. I, I mean, this Secretary General and the previous Secretary General, who was just here, some of you saw him, um, and his predecessor have all called for reform of the Security Council, have all called for a Security Council that is more reflective of uh, the world that we live in, 2022, if my count is correct, rather than 1945. How council members, how member states, the, the, general, the, the general membership of the UN gets to that point is the subject of discussions and it is their decisions. Does that mean that um, you would not be involved in any talks with member states about how to achieve that? The member states, uh, I think, jealously and rightfully uh, guard their uh, prerogative to uh, create the, the rules and structures on how this organization works. Obviously, the Secretary General remains available should anybody ask his opinion. Yes, sir. Martin, please. Uh, thank you, Steph. <coughs> Uh, Steph, do you still have the plan, like we did before, to brief us about the uh, statement of the Secretary General uh, to the general debate? Uh, with, I, I with very much hope we can figure out uh, when, where, and who, uh, but it helps. I know it helps you with the coverage, which helps us as well. Thank you. Edward, now come back to you. I believe Michelle has already asked the question on DPRK. Uh, I just have a follow-up on uh, Secretary General's visit to Pakistan. He himself, I believe, he has already seen those victims by the floods and, and also to see those catastrophic images himself in his so he's, see, he's, he's seeing that tomorrow. Oh, he's um, seen that. Okay. T t today... Uh, I, think, I think you mentioned he has already seen the... No, he the, went to the... Um, coordination center. Today yeah. was in Islamabad. It was uh, meetings with the Pakistani leadership, with the UN team, uh, meeting the, the coordination, uh, visiting the coordination center. Tomorrow, he will be in the field all day. So I'll save this question on Monday. <laughs> and sorry. Uh, I, I, on, on the Black Sea, on the Black Sea Graham initiative, I remember uh, it's Tuesday or Monday. Uh, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned that the MOU with with Russia from the UN, you have to confirm. Is there yeah, a, I just yeah. I, I is there a, 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 a I, I time need to yet? have an answer. I have need to have an answer for you on that. I did not do my homework. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have also a question about the Black Sea Initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I, I remember that uh, the both treaties featured the Commission that will con uh, control the grain uh, exports. Uh, and uh, in Ukraine, we fix uh, that Russia is massively stealing uh, grain from the occupied uh, territories of Ukraine and is selling it as its own. Uh, is there any uh, mechanism of, of controlling Russian grain uh, of like whether it came, whether it was stolen, whether it came from Ukraine, and how how the commission uh, is the, doing? The commission uh, that exists uh, for the export of Ukrainian grain, the coordination center, is there to coordinate the movement of ships, right? to ensure the safety of ships as they leave Ukrainian harbors and they make their way through the Bosphorus and the Dardanelles if they go uh, further out, if they don't stay in, uh, in, in Turkey. Um, there is no, on the, on, the, um, on the export of Russian grain and, uh, and fertilizer, uh, there is no s similar commission. It is just us working with different parties to facilitate the process. So uh, it's like uh, when uh, many countries are like accusing uh, Ukraine of uh, exporting most of its grains not to the poor countries but to like Europe. I know that such news are like all over the media right now. Uh, so there is uh, nobody who can guarantee that the, the Russian grain that came to poor countries wasn't actually Ukrainian but stolen. There, yeah? there is. We do not have investigatory, as far as secretary is concerned, investigatory capacity nor mandate. Oh. Yeah, please, with your microphone, please. Just a quick follow-up on that. Uh, are there worries that some of the grain is stolen? Is I think w WFP has, has spoken on that. Thank you. Okay, uh, Paulina. I have one question, please. Oh, yes, Iftikhar, please yes. go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, uh, thank you, Steph. I may have missed it, but I haven't seen the Secretary General's uh, report on the work of the organization, which is usually issued with fanfare. Uh, I will check for you, Iftikhar. I will check. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh. 